Hey, Pixel here. Today, I want to talk about Remote Play and PlayStation 5. I've done a number of tests with Remote Play, and I've measured the latency, and I've measured some of the quality, and I want to, I want to show all that off, but at the same time, I also want to kind of open this up with some of my findings about the Remote Play with PS5 and some of my disappointments, because this has been a little bit of a mixed bag for me as far as features with PlayStation 5. One of the really great things about the Remote Play on PS4 was that it could connect to a myriad of different devices. Yes, you had Android and iOS and Windows, just like PlayStation 5 has, but it also connected to Vita and PlayStation TV, which, disappointingly enough, PlayStation 5 doesn't support those. This does make sense because those devices are no longer being supported by Sony, and at some point in time they have to stop writing software for them, but those were two of the really cool devices that when connecting to a PlayStation 4 still felt like you were in that PlayStation ecosystem. In lieu of those devices though, we now have the ability to remote play into PlayStation 4. And I'm happy to report that the remote play on PlayStation 4 works fairly well. It's better than the Vita or the PlayStation TV versions ever were, but that's probably because there's a lot more horsepower in the PlayStation 4. Not only that, but in PlayStation 5, the chip that they're using to do the streaming for the hardware is probably a much better chip. Regardless of how strong that new hardware is though, there's always going to be latency. And that's because on a network, there's only so fast that these bytes can be passed back and forth for you to play a game. The latency is never going to go away, but it can be minimized a little bit. I've done a number of tests with the PlayStation 5 and PC and with the PlayStation 5 and PS4. And I'd like to show those off now to show you which different settings worked best for me and how much latency you can expect given those settings. So in this chart that looks like just a ton of numbers, it's a wall of numbers, you can see that I've broken it up into tests with the PC and with the PS4, both as clients. And you can see that I mixed up both LAN and Wi-Fi configurations. I wasn't able to get my PC into a Wi-Fi state because I didn't have the necessary card to do so. That stays strictly LAN. But with the PS4, I was able to do that. And you can see my LAN to LAN results on the PS4 were rock solid, 66 milliseconds, which is about four frames for a 60 frame game across the board. Doesn't matter what resolution I used. And that's because resolution is going to do more with your um, bandwidth than it's going to have to do with your latency on the network overall. And this kind of shows, it kind of proves that latency really does have a floor that you're going to run up against. And that looks like it's going to be about four frames on a 60 frame game or two frames on a 30 frame game. Regardless of the two, it's going to be about 66 milliseconds. Once we start bringing Wi-Fi into the situation, things get a little bit more turbulent. This is because Wi-Fi in any configuration is going to be prone to interference. When you get that interference in there, you're gonna get spikes of lag here and there. That's gonna uh, introduce latency into your connection. So if you can, you want to not be on Wi-Fi. I did find though that where the PS5 was on Wi-Fi and my PS4 was on LAN, I ended up with a pretty stable condition. And this is a testament to how good the Wi-Fi in the PS5 is. I was really close to my router, so your mileage may vary on Wi-Fi. It's gonna completely depend on your environment but I had pretty decent results there. Things really went south for me once I put both devices on Wi-Fi. This is a situation that you really wanna to try to avoid if you can because your spikes in latency are gonna be somewhat out of control and it's gonna be very difficult to time things as you play the games. If that's your environment though, that may just be what you have to deal with. In this case though, like many cases when you're remoting into something, LAN to LAN is the best way to go. I also had some kind of interesting results with the PC remoting. More than the results here that are in the table, I found that there's some stuttering and some frame dropping that happens in the remote client for PC. Now that might just be some problem with my specific client, but I have noticed in the past that it did the same thing on PS4. There might be some inefficiencies that are in that particular bit of software. I found though overall, 
PS4 is the better way to remote into your PS5 if you're trying to do that. But PS5 or the PC is probably the more convenient of the two to remote into. So you're going to be picking your poison to some extent. Either you're going to get your performance or you're going to get your convenience. But there is better ways to do it than others. And having a wired line is the best way to do it. That's all great for your performance in controlling the system, but what about the picture quality overall? We are given a lot of different options for what you may want to set for your remote play picture quality. On the PS4, you get 540, 720, and 1080. On the PC, you get those same options, but you also get 360p. Now, which one you select has a lot less to do with the overall impact on latency, as you remember the numbers before, and a little bit more on what your bandwidth is. Now, I did find that there's some situations where the higher resolutions did impact the latency. I'm questioning whether that is anomalies or if there's something else at play there. But for the most part, if you're on your own network within your own home and you have 100 megabits plus, which pretty much every network should be that, at least today, it's likely you actually have a gigabit network. Um, it's not gonna matter which particular resolution you choose, and you should probably choose 720 or 1080 because both of those are gonna give you the most premium picture available. 360 and 540 are so low, 360 is just not even worth doing at all. You're gonna have such a muddy picture overall and so much different artifacts and, and blocking in, in the picture that it's just going to be too distracting. 540 is serviceable, it's manageable, it's, you can do that. Um, it's not exactly consistently pleasing. A lot of times when there's lots of flashing or lots of motion in the screen, you start to get that artifacting again. Um, 720 is where the picture really starts to get good. As a matter of fact, I found in a lot of my tests when I was doing a side-by-side -side comparison, 720 was where I started to have a more difficult time determining which side was the source and which side was the, the client for the, which one was the PS4 and which one was the PS5, and which one was the PC or the PS5 as well. Uh, 1080p, it also becomes relatively indistinguishable. Now there are lots of different um, areas, like if there's dark colors where you might see some um, blocking in the darker black areas on 1080p, that's because there's a lot of color compression that's going on. They're trying to make as, as little information that they have to pass as possible. I did think uh, overall that I really would have liked to have some sort of a higher quality. I, I felt like there was there was a performance uh, ability. The PS5, I think, has the ability to push a little bit more bandwidth. I'd really like to see like a 1080p additional enhanced version where they push a little bit more bandwidth. I have the space on my network and from my tests, particularly with PS4 streaming to PS5, both on LAN, everything was just rock solid stable. I was missing that same four seconds across the board. I really think that there's room to push a little bit more quality and I really would have liked to see a little bit better of a picture, even though in like most cases that I had said, it, it starts to get indistinguishable in a lot of scenes in the game. So the remote play starts to feel really good. The controls are always still gonna be a little bit mushy, but the picture and the experience overall is pretty good at 1080p. I do have some complaints about this feature overall though. One of them is that you can't use a DualSense controller on anything, anywhere. It doesn't work on PS4, doesn't work on Android, doesn't work on PC, doesn't work on iOS. It doesn't matter where you're trying to remote play into your PS5, you cannot use the DualSense controller, which is kind of funny because they made a comment when the PlayStation 5 first came out that you can't play PlayStation 5 games with a DualShock 4 because there was features that you had to have off the DualSense. However, when you remote play into anything, you have to use a DualShock 4 and then you can play the, Dual, the PlayStation 5 games just perfectly. So there's something wrong with that messaging overall. And that gets me to the implementation of mobile devices and remote play. Now, this does work on iOS and Android, as I have said, but I can only really talk to Android and I can tell you that the implementation on Android is abysmal. In some corner cases, for people that have Android devices that are on version 10 or higher, and they are specifically supported by Sony, you can connect the DualShock 4 to your phone and it will work with remote play and I'm sure it's super awesome. I, in my house, have two different devices that are on Android 10. Neither one of them are supported by DualShock 4 
And that's increasingly frustrating to have that happen, specifically when they say that that's what you need to make it work. It makes it even worse though, because you can connect your DualShock 4 to just about any version of Android, and it'll work on everything, except for the PlayStation Remote Play app, which doesn't make any sense. To even further add insult to injury, there's an app that's been created by a third party person that they're selling for $5 that not only allows you to remote play into your PS4, this does not work on your PS5 yet, it not only lets you remote play into your PS4, but you can use your DualShock 4 as well. If somebody as a third party can do this, why can't Sony? The biggest complaint I have with this whole thing is that one of their key competitors is Nintendo, and their Switch is killing it when it comes to portability. Portability around the house is a thing. I play my Switch from my bedroom all the time. And the reason I'm not playing my PlayStation is because I'm unable to remote play into it with my tablet or with my smartphone. They need to get on that feature and they need to fix it. But for now, the PlayStation P5 to PlayStation 4 connectivity is pretty good and so is the PlayStation 5 to PC connectivity. And for now, those will suffice. They've done pretty good in my performance tests overall, but I really want to see Sony expand what they're connecting to because it feels like we've lost more than we've gained in this new generation of consoles. If you liked this video, then like this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, take a look at some of my other talks or reviews. I've got a number of them up on my channel. If you like those, then consider subscribing. Thanks for hanging out with me, and until next time, this has been Pixel.